So Paladins get a brand new talent which is actually good. Execution Sentence is going back to its original form but there's still more to be desired in terms of mobility and covenants. You'll get all these plus soulbinds, conduits and legendaries so be sure to watch until the end as red seem to draw more and more power from the light. The flashlight that is, am I right? <laughs> uh, no. Doesn't matter if I am right because you are always right to check out our stream at twitch.tv slash marcelianonline. A great place to go and check out all the different specs in Shadowlands or do some Mythic Plus Dungeons with you and running raids on Wednesdays on top of the Saturday streams which are the longest and yeah, that's enough for you to follow. Now in terms of the unpruning on red, this time you will not be getting a big look at all the abilities because we already did that in our alpha overview of the spec and you can check it out in the top right corner after you're done watching this one. I will however say this. We get auras back and sure devotion aura is decent and concentration aura will be useful in pvp no doubt. But crusader aura and retribution aura were passives for red and it just doesn't make sense to now have to choose between them on GCD mind you, especially Red Aura which is just not doing anything for us or our party whatsoever. It was a poor passive and it is a poor aura. Hand of Sacrifice is a very welcome and useful addition and having Wake of Ashes and Hammer of Wrath baseline is a godsend no doubt. Shield of Righteous and Consecration don't do much at all with the requirement to equip a one-hander and shield to be able to use Shield of the Righteous feeling clunky plus the added defense benefit being small. Small is also the damage of Consecration, an ability you will only use once you have nothing else to press. Most reds will probably not even bind these but hey, I am all for unpruning and bringing back iconic stuff. Divine Protection would have been a great addition for the unpruning same as Exorcism or Holy Wrath. But hey, we still have two months, here's for hoping. First off, let's dive into the Covenants, with the Kyrians providing you with Divine Toll. A very decent option if you plan to only do Mythic Plus runs, as this will enable your Judgment to hit a max of 5 targets debuffing them all for you to use Divine Storm on these which will hit much harder. Being on a 1 minute cooldown also pairs up nicely with the final reckoning talent which we will get to in the talent sections in a second. Now if you want to do raiding or raiding and mythic plus then Divine Toll will take a big step backwards as in terms of single target it's just an empowered judgement. and. This is really sad because if you think of it, Skeletor pointed this out quite clearly. For Reds, Divine Toll is just the old Legion talent greater judgment and it doesn't feel fair that Holy is getting 5 Holy Shocks, Prot is getting 5 Avenger Shield and we are getting an old talent baked into this so called new ability from the Kyrian Covenant. Possible solution is to have the ability do something for single target too that feels a bit more meaningful. Until that update comes around, we're moving to the Venthyr with a much more decent toolkit for almost all game content, dungeons, raids and even PvP. Ashen Hollow is now 100% an AoE ability on an immense area that lasts 30 seconds and retains its whooping 4 minute cooldown. The damage is great and the fact that it allows you to use Hammer of Wrath within it buffed with 100% more damage also addresses the single target aspect of the ability. It also heals all allies within the radius of it and to an extent I guess you can praise it for its AoE healing utility a bit. Anywho, it's a definitely strong pick for Reds, although 4 minutes is still too much. I mean sure it does great damage and provides a lot of benefits but maybe if they reduce the cooldown to 2 minutes and reduce its duration from 30 to 15 seconds, it would make it a lot more appealing and also line nicely with Avenging Wrath. While we don't usually talk much about utility abilities from the Covenants, I feel that Ventir has you know, a really important one in Door of Shadows. 
because this will help red mobility a lot, especially with a movement speed Soulbound, which we will cover shortly. So yeah, Venter is kind of an all-rounder at this point for reds. However, the Necro Lords provide a viable option in Vanquishing Hammer, as the latest change for this makes probably the best Covenant ability all around for reds. First off, the damage is good, and it also gets buffed by a conduit for a ridiculous amount. Starts at 100% and goes to 250% at max level. And on top of that, it only has 30 seconds cooldown, and it also enables a free Divine Storm when you hit with Templar's Verdict. I mean, sure, this will make it a bit weird in terms of rotation in AoE, adding to this that it costs one Holy Power. But only having a 30 second cooldown is a major advantage as this ability is viable for all type of content in WoW, from solo stuff to raiding. I mean sure, it doesn't have the AoE value of Ashen Hollow as Vanquish in Hammer is ultimately a single target ability, but as opposed to Divine Toll from Kyrians, it does have a bit of AoE value in terms of the free Divine Storm triggering with your Templar's Verdict after you use the Vanquishing Hammer. The Night Fae brings us blessings of seasons, and sure, when you first heard about this, I bet you were pretty excited, but honestly, at this point, this ability is pretty much dead, and if they don't change it for the better, I don't see that many reds picking it up. With the latest changes, this ability is worse, as it will only benefit a player and not your party anymore. That's one thing, but let me explain how this works. It's a set of 4 buffs based on the seasons, Blessing of Summer, of Autumn, of Winter, and of Spring. The first one you press is Blessing of Summer, which will provide you, or a party member, a 40% chance to deal 30% more damage as Holy. This one can last longer due to a conduit, but by far the most important blessing will be Blessing of Autumn, which will work similar to the ineffable truth corruption in the sense that once this is on somebody, it will cause their cooldowns to recover 30% faster. <laughs> and this was nerfed by the way, because it originally had the reduction for 50%. Blessing of Winter will deal moderate frost damage and it will also slow your target and reduce its movement speed stacking. Blessing of Spring is the more defensive one in the sense that it will increase the self-healing you or your party member will do by 10% and the healing received by 20%. Now, once you press a blessing, it will last for 30 seconds, but the cooldown for pressing the next one is 45 seconds, which doesn't really make a lot of sense at, at all since the 45 second cooldown doesn't help with aligning wings with Blessing of Autumn for example. There is a lot more to discuss around Covenants as currently even the ones that are so called viable for Reds, i.e. Venthyr or Necrolords, they still need a lot of love and I strongly suggest that you read Skeletor's feedback on them on the WoW forum. Link is in the description. Once you've finished watching the video, go check it out. Alright, Talents. First row brings us a change to Execution Sentence as now it will work how it previously did until Warlords of Draenor, I think, but with a couple of twists. First off, after you press it, it will not immediately deal its damage but have the slow falling hammer animation and it will hit your target after 8 seconds and that for a big ass amount of damage. It doesn't have the dot anymore and you cannot cast it on yourself or party members for heals like it used to which it's a shame because that added much more versatility to it and played into the decision making and the paladin fantasy. You deal damage or you heal. That being said, ES still costs 3 holy powers and it's on a 1 minute cooldown which will work perfectly with a new talent added which we'll, we'll get to shortly. Overall, it's a good buff, a good change, most spreads seem to like it. Next row gives you Fires of Justice, which is a dead talent for such a long time now, you'd be right to wonder why would they keep it there. Blade of Rat is the same, uh, and Empyrean Power, the former BFA Azurite trait which should have been a clear choice at least for AoE, but nope, it's bad. The fact that it only procs off of Crusader Strike implies that CS has to go up in your priority in cleave fights and even with that, the 15% chance is so low, I think I had only one proc in a whole dungeon run. So at this point, Blade of Wrath 
will be the absolute go-to talent, especially with a potency conduit that will buff its damage and rage. We'll cover that too in the Soul Bites and Coven Sanctions. Just have patience. Third row is the same with the CC options. Fourth row still has Cavalier there, which again doesn't make sense. I mean, at this point, they should make Divine Steed baseline and maybe place in the old Divine Protection in here. You know, the one that provided the magic damage reduction. So you can have a complete set of choices in terms of defenses. Lower cooldown for Shield of Vengeance, Divine Protection for magic damage, or Eye for an Eye for physical damage. The fifth row looks the same as it did in the first iteration of the alpha with Divine Purpose working the same, Holy Avenger still being at a 3 minute cooldown but not working as the mini bloodlust, but rather having one Holy Power Generator actually generating 3 and Seraphine buffing your stats for 15 seconds on a 45 second cooldown. And this is okay if it wasn't for that goddamn cooldown. They can slightly increase the stats buff and place Seraphim on a 1 minute cooldown which will make it easier to align with Execution Sentence and Wings too. 6th row still sees a dead talent since Legion in the form of Justicar's Vengeance. Again, don't see any possible reason why they keep it in this form. Selfless Healer is still the same, but we get a big buff to World of Glory in the talent change for Healing Hands. This has an extra effect now, I mean, sure, it will reduce your Lay on Hands up to 60% based on your target's missing health, but it also buffs World of Glory's heal by up to 30% based on the same missing amount of health, and this actually improves the heal as previous to this, World of Glory was just a joke. That being said, it's still sad they removed the AoE heal from World of Glory, because it was one thing that people actually consider reds for in Mythic Plus. Granted, the heal was super big. Nevertheless, we still miss it. For the last bro, Inquisition is gone, and as much as I love playing with it, I have to admit that the new talent Final Reckoning feels great, looks great, deals good damage in AoE and decent in single target on top of buffing the damage of your holy power spenders by 50% for 8 seconds. Not only this, but this talent also has a passive. <laughs> Imagine that. While Final Reckoning is on cooldown, you have a chance of striking a Holy Bolt to your target for moderate damage, but it will buff your next Holy Power Spender by 10%. It's a great talent and it lines so good with Execution Sentence, so basically you get this 1 minute window of huge burst potential with Wings, Execution Sentence, Final Reckoning and Seraphim. Of course, the GCDs is and still will be a big problem for all these abilities. Hoping for more changes on that front too, but overall, at least the talent changes are in the right direction. For legendaries, you're gonna see only the one specific for red, as these will have the biggest impact, at least so far. So first on the list is the Badge of the Mad Paragon, which was initially an ability from Thorgast, but nevertheless, this will enable your Hammer of Wrath to deal 25% more damage and increase your rings by 1 second. Now, pairing this up with Ashen Hallow can really bump your Hammer of Wrath in the priority list, and it is true that this legendary started initially at 3 seconds extended duration for wings, which was pretty OP and would give a ridiculous amount of wings uptime. Still a good legendary, no doubt. An interesting choice for Mythic Plus will have to be the Tempest of the Lightbringer, and you know this effect if you played red in Legion. This will increase your Divine Storm damage by 20% and it will also throw it forward 20 yards, dealing damage on its way. Not the best option for raiding, but 100% for dungeons. The final verdict legendary is also a good choice, providing you more access to Hammer of Red, as it provides a 50% chance to activate Hammer of Red and reset its cooldown, but also adding a bit of the old final verdict talent from Wad, where your Templar's verdict can be used from 10 yards and it has its animation changed, which I always like. You know, the golden light hammer smashing on your enemy's head. Lovely. Last red specific legendary is Relentless Inquisitor, which was an Azerite trade in BFA that would grant you haste per holy power spent stacking. It works the same in the legendary mode in Shadowlands, although the haste has been nerfed slightly, and to be fair, this was at some point a good trade to have for reds at the beginning of BFA, 
but it never was a priority moving down the expansion, but rather just something you would pick because nothing else was available. Doesn't feel like a legendary in any way, shape or form. This one was changed in the latest build, providing you 1% haste per holy power spender, stacking up to max 5 times. Latest build also brought the removal of Leodrin's Fury Reborn and replaced with Vanguard's Momentum, a legendary that provides you with 2 extra charges of Hammer of Wrath. And sure, at first glance you might think this is shit, but it does provide you with more hammers in your wings window, not to mention the buff these get within Ashen Hallow and the buff from Execution Sentence too. I mean, Hammer of Wrath can seriously deal some damage. So let's talk about Soulbinds and Conduits. Now just for you to understand this a bit easier, Soulbinds are the big traits that unlock progressively with your chosen Soulbind hero, while Conduits are smaller traits that you can obtain from different content in the world that will improve or alter some of your playstyle. We shall cover the ones that actually look good for reds and have a bigger impact. Soulbinds first, Conduits after. Nadia from the Venter brings you fancy footwork, which will further add to your mobility issues as red, because this will enable Door of Shadows to increase your movement speed by 40% after you teleport. And this is the one I was talking about earlier in the Covenant section. She also gives familiar predicaments further down the tree, which will add even more to your mobility, reducing the duration of snares, roots, and interrupts by 25%. Problem is, this competes directly with exacting preparation, a soulbind that will increase the bonus from well fed, flasks and weapon enchants by 15%, so if you plan to PvE, this will be great overall. There is also Dauntless Duelist, again on the same row, which provides a flat 4% damage increase on one target, and Thrill Seeker, the final soulbind which will provide you with stacking haste when in combat with an enemy, or after you kill it. Overall, Nadia really looks like a strong pick for all types of content. Oddly enough, the Necrolords don't have that many soulbinds in terms of pure damage gains. I mean, sure, you can go for Gnashing Chompers from Emony, which will give you great haste amounts, but only in big pools or fights where lots of ads spawn. There is a saving grace for the Necrolords in the form of one conduit, and we will cover it shortly. Kyrians will have you pick Pelagos hands down as one of the best for reds, especially with the let go of the past thing, giving you an almost 100% uptime for an extra 5% versatility buff, but also the last soulbind combat meditation and 8% mastery buff with a fairly decent uptime. These work on both raids and dungeons, so if you like the Kyrians and Bluther, Pelagos looks the strongest. The Night Fae can also provide some decent options from Dreamweaver, things like Field of Blossoms to increase your haste by 5% each time a different season is casted. There is also Social Butterfly, which will increase your versatility by 5% for 5 seconds when you have at least 2 buddies around. Those buddies will also get the buff once it expires on you, and once it expires on them, it will bounce back to you. Pretty, huh? In terms of conduits, we'll be looking at the potency ones mainly, as these are DPS oriented, in theory, and a bit at the covenant specific ones too. Kicking it off with expurgation. You remember the Azerite trait from BFA? Well, it's making its way as a legendary with the latest Beta Clan. And if you remember how it worked, basically your Blade of Justice crits will make a little dot for 6 seconds on your target for 20% of the damage held every two seconds. It isn't the best out there, it wasn't the best trait, sure it worked in BFA at some point, but the more sad thing is, it replaced one hell of a legendary we had prior to this latest beta build. And that was Lice Reach, that increased the damage of, of Blade of Red by 20% and it also increased the range of it by 20 yards. <sighs> so sad this is gone and replaced with Expurgation, oh, don't understand why. Another strong conduit will be Virtuous Command, which will cause your judgments to give a 20% chance for an extra 10% holy damage on your weapon attacks, Crusader Strike, Blade of Justice and Templar's Verdict. This will have 25% extra holy damage at max rank. Pretty good. 
Truth's Wake is the former effect we had in Legion on Wake of Ashes, which would leave a dot on your targets for 10 seconds, but now it diminishes with multiple targets, so you can take this, sure, but the biggest value will still be single target. One mention on conduits addressing your mobility is the finesse conduit Echoing Blessings, which was again changed with the latest build, giving you a 5% increase in movement speed for the duration of Hand of Freedom and 5% damage reduction for the duration of Blessing of Protection and Blessing of Sacrifice. This also lasts for an extra 8 seconds after the buff has ended and the percentage can go up to 12% at max rank. Alright, back to DPS conduits. Righteous Might is the Necrolord specific conduit I kept on talking about, and this conduit could become the sole reason to go for the Necrolords as it will buff your Vanquishing Hammer by 100% at rank 1, with a whopping 250% at max rank. In its current state, it deals great damage, but it does come at the trade-off of not having the best soulbinds out there. The Night Fae provides the Long Summer Conduit, a good one without a doubt as it will increase the duration of your Blessing of Summer by 30% at rank 1 and 60% at max rank. If they make more changes to the Blessing of Seizing's ability in the sense of making the Covenant worth going for, then yeah, with this Covenant you would have more reasons to try out the Night Fae. A lot more discussion and details on Red is going on in the Hammer of Red Discord, where incredibly experienced and knowledgeable Reds like Skeletor, MB, and Red will give feedback and address a lot of the questions, so go there for anything Red related. Now, at this point, Red Paladins feel decently strong in dungeons in terms of damage, with the changes to Execution Sentence and Additional Final Reckoning really adding to that value overall. In terms of rating, Castle Nathria has a plethora of bleed damage situations where a paladin will really shine with the buff to World of Glory, Sacrifice, Bop, and Eye for an Eye reducing physical damage, since bleeds are physical damage, so utility wise it will be a bit better, but in terms of single target damage, we will be basically a short mega burst window performers, which is okay I guess, but probably a bit weaker than we were in BFA. I can still see us somewhere in the middle of the pack on the meters and in Castle Nathria. We still have big problems with the GCD stuff, but not as before since Wings and Holy Avenger were taken out of the GCD, so that should feel a little bit more fluid. Granted, we lost the auto crit from Wings and the instant 3 Holy Powers from Holy Avenger. Dead talents for two expansions like Fires of Justice or Just a Cause Vengeance should really either be removed or rework to be able to compete with other talents or at least be decently viable. With all this being said, Red is not that horrible, it is still fun and if you enjoy the playstyle, I guess you could call it slow but deadly. There were specs and still are in a much worse state than Red. Sure, you can argue the mobility issues but really, Covenants and Soulbinds can really curve that to some extent. Tuning is still being done as well as changes to classes and specs, so no firm conclusion can be drawn just yet. But firm as rocks are our Patreons who are the best people in the world because not only they make most of these videos possible, but they are constantly coming up with ideas and feedback, so you guys, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And hey, if you want to join the team, just check the link in the description, check the perks and maybe you'll find something you like. Thanks for watching the video, see you soon. I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wild. Wow. Still, I play wild. Wow. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wild. Wow. Still, I play wild. Wow. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wild. Wow.